It's possible to move it here. Is it possible? Okay. No, no, it's just going to impede me. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala sharfi l-anbiya al-mursaleen. Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen amma ba'd. When you look into the life of some pious individuals and you look into their family lineage, one can do nothing but marvel over the pious people that they had in their family tree. And in return, the tarbiyah that these elders do has an everlasting effect on this individual. In his salah, in his soul, in his piety, taqwa, every facet of his life. If you look into Yusuf alayhi salatu salam, Yusuf alayhi salatu salam's father Yaqub alayhi salatu salam, a prophet. His grandfather was Ishaq alayhi salatu salam, a prophet. His grandfather's brother Ismail alayhi salatu salam was a prophet. And his great grandfather Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam were a prophet. Kareem ibn al Kareem ibn al Kareem. The riyatun ba'duha ba'dha. They had a deep impact upon his life. And similarly, if you look into the life of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, one of the most illustrious youngsters out of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum was a man called Abdullah ibn Zubayr radiallahu anhu. And his tarbiyah, his grandfather was no other than the best man to walk on the face of this earth after the Anbiya alayhi salatu salam, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. His auntie was that person regarding who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon occasion was asked, O Messenger of Allah, who is the most beloved person? Person to you, and the Prophet sallallahu replied, Aisha radiallahu anha, and the most beloved person to Aisha radiallahu anha after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, was no other than Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu anhu. His uh, his grandmother was Safiya radiallahu anha, the auntie of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His mother was Asma. Asma radiallahu anha was one of the bravest women that this ummah has ever seen. She would risk her life to take food for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whilst he was in the cave. And his father was Zubair ibn al-Awam radiallahu anhu, one of the ten who was guaranteed Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallam said in a narration, لِكُلِّ نَبِينَ هُوَارِيٌ وَإِنَّ هُوَارِيَ ذُبَيْرٌ That every prophet has a disciple, and my disciple is Zubair. In another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Zubair and Talha's houses would be next to my house in Jannah. This was the holistic environment in which Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu anhu was born. He had the tarbiyah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the tarbiyah of these great individuals. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhu mentioned there were three things that nobody disputed regarding Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu anhu. One was his piety and his ibadah. The second was his eloquence, and the third was his bravery. And really, it would be no exaggeration to say that as a Sheikh Rahmatullah Alayhi was born and he was brought up in a time, in a place, in a family which had some of the greatest awliya of their time. His grandfather was Mawlana Muhammad Ismail Rahmatullah Alayhi and you can ascertain his piety from this. That upon occasion he went to the Imam of his time, Mulana Rashid Ahmed Gongoy Rahmatullah alayhi, and he said, Oh Shaykh, I want to give bayah to you. And Mulana Rashid Ahmed Gongoy Rahmatullah alayhi refused. And he said, Oh Mulana, you have attained all that can be attained through a bayah. For you to give bayah to me would be like a person who had memorized the Quran. And then he starts to read the Qaeda again. His uncle, subhanallah, what can I say about his uncle? His uncle was no other than Mawlana Ilyas Rahmatullah Alayhi, the founder of the Tabligh Jamaat. Mawlana Ilyas Rahmatullah Alayhi, his grandmother would say to him, once he was a child, he would say, Oh Ilyas, from you I smell the fragrance of the Sahaba of one Allah Jma'een. And he was a man, really, a man who could not sleep at night because of his concern for humanity and the Ummah. 
He was a man who would burn inside because he could not express his pain and his anguish. His father was no other than Mawlana Yahya Rahmatullah Alay, the man who really did this tarbiyah whilst he was a child. Mawlana Yahya Rahmatullah Alay, by the time he had stopped suckling, he was at the age of two and he had nearly memorized the entire juz of the Quran. And in the entire juz of the Quran, and you compare that to our children today, really, because there is a lack of a tarbiyah. You know, children come to the masjid and the maktabs at the age of five, and at the age of five, you ask them basic questions like, "Who is your God? Who is your Allah? Who is your Lord?" And they can't reply. You ask them, "How many lords do you worship?" They don't know. You ask them the name of their prophet, they don't know. But the same children, you ask them about the Teletubbies and the Tweenies, they'll rattle them off. They'll rattle them off. Why? Because there's a lack of tarbiyah. Five years. What have you done with your children for five years? And Mawlana Yahya Rahmatullah Alayhi, by the time he became seven, he became a hafiz of the Quran and his ma'mu, his routine every day was that he would finish the entire Quran by the Dhuhr Salah and then only would he get his lunch. And it was in this environment that as a Shaykh Rahmatullah Alayhi was born, really. And I can mention many other individuals within this family, Mawlana Yusuf Rahmatullah Alayhi, Mawlana Inam al Hassan Rahmatullah Alayhi. The women of this family were a beacon of light and piety within themselves. And one thing very important is that you see these individuals, their tarfiya started at a very young age. Because the early part is the most important part of individual's life. It is the foundation. And this is why it is one of the hikmas of Allah. That the time it takes a human being to mature compared to an animal is considerably longer. Animals mature within a fraction of the time that human beings mature. Why? Because man is destined to be the khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this earth. And this is why, well, as soon as a child is born, the tarbiyah starts. The tarbiyah starts. The first thing that you do when a child is born is that you give the adhan. Because you are inculcating tawheed in that child that you have come into this dunya. And you will see the glamour and the glitter of this dunya. But understand, all of it is temporal. All of it is transient. All of it will perish. But Allah will always remain akbar. You are instilling in that child the fact that everything that you have is transient and everything which is by Allah is eternal. And this was a lesson as the Shaykh Rahmatullah Alayhi learned very early in his life. He mentioned that he was three years old. And upon three years old, and his father once asked, he said, Zakaria, bring me a pillow. And he mentioned that his mother made him this beautiful pillow with embroidery upon it. And I said to my father, shall I bring you my pillow? Shall I bring you my pillow? And he said, my father called me. He grabbed me and he slapped me. And he said, you, at this age, you started saying mine? He said, what have you earned to say mine? So what have you earned to say that is yours? As the Shaykh Muhammadullah Alayhi mentioned that whenever I will recall this incident, it will do nothing besides make the belief firm in my heart that nothing belongs to me and everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really, you compare that to our youngsters today. You buy them the Playstations, you buy them the mountain bikes, you buy them the Nike trainers and the designer clothes and they'll say, that. You never buy me anything. No, sorry, that's too grammatically right. Dad, you never buy me nothing. You never buy me nothing. And who's to blame? Who's to blame? It's the parents. The child wants a 70 pound pair of Nike trainers. You blind. He wants a Versace top, Calvin Klein top, a Cartier watch. You, uh, you oblige. And what do you inculcate in that child? The child has a greater concern for his hairstyle than he has for their hereafter. And you look at the life of the Shaykh Rahmatullah Alayhi, he mentions that when his mother was, he was 15 years old, and his mother fell very ill in her home village. And the father sent me there to see my mother. 
and so severe was her illness that many people thought that she may even pass away. away. And it was one of her desires. He was 15 years old at the time. It was one of her desires that she wanted to see her child in nice clothes. For 15 years that the Shaykh Rahmatullah had never worn nice clothes because this was the tarbi of his father. And when he reached, so she requested the aunties to sew him a nice pair of clothes. And the aunties, because they saw that this could be her last days, they quickly sewed him a beautiful vest, a nice kurta, a silky amama, and, these, and they bought him these expensive butter slippers. And as the Shaykh Rahmatullah mentions that I was wearing these, and unexpectedly my father turned up. And he said, my, I, my, our eyes met. And I was totally hypnotized. And a few minutes later, those shoes which I was wearing, those sandals, were in my father's hands. And then he was chastised. But as the Shaykh Ahmadullah mentions, that after this incident, it is the favor of Allah. It is the favor of Allah and the reward of Allah that my dislike for pomp and lavish clothing only increased to the degree that I would dislike it not only on myself but on other people and really deluded societies will give you deluded concepts of respect they will tell you your respect lies in the trainers you wear in the shoes that you wear in the clothes that you wear this is what they will tell you but this is not where the Muslim respect lies our respect lies in Islam our respect lies in Islam. When Umar ibn Khattab went to Jerusalem and they came up to him and he was wearing his old patchy clothes and they said, Omir al-Mu'mineen, the leaders of these places, they wear pomp and lavish clothes. And you, Omir al-Mu'mineen, just temporarily change your clothes. And Umar did Umar anhu say, Umar anhu said that, we were a base nation and Allah gave us izza, honor, respect through Islam. Where will we be if we relinquish the teachings of Islam? Really, because nobody will remember you for the cars that you drive, the mansion that you live in, the clothes that you wear. They will remember you for your character. They will remember you for your character. You look at Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu Everybody remembers Umar radiallahu anhu. He's radiallahu anhu till now and he will be radiallahu anhu until the day of judgment. Where are those pomp and lavish leaders who existed in his time? You look at the Shaykh rahmatullah alayhi, never wore expensive pair of clothes throughout his life. But we remember him. Why? Because of his contribution to humanity. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left this dunya, he was, and he was the greatest of patients sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was wearing clothes which had 12 patches on them. When the best man after the Anbiya alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam, Abu Bakr radiallahu alayhi left this world, he was wearing clothes which had 14 patches on them. When Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahmatullahi alayhi was passing away, and Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was, when he was the Khalif, his reign spanned from China to Europe, from the Caucasus to the depths of Africa. And somebody said to his wife while he was passing away, he had these old patchy clothes on. And they said, why don't you change his clothes? And his wife remained quiet. And the man said it again, and the third time. And she said, these are the only clothes that he has. And when we ever we remember Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, we say Rahmatullah alayhi, when the Rustam, who was the second in charge of the Persian Empire, met Rabbi ibn Amir radiallahu anhu, and he, when he went back to his advisors, he said to his advisors, he said, have you ever seen a man who is so eloquent and so confident in his speech? And they said, don't you incline to the religion of this dog? And then they said, because they regarded this as their measure of respect. They said, don't you see his clothes? And Rustam said, fools, don't you understand that these people don't care about their clothes. They have a greater objective in life. 
And that is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the objective of believers in this life. That 